Hello, 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 everyone. This is Disgruntled Elk back at you after a little bit of a break. It's been just kind of busy. I've been prepping for the uh, upcoming Pioneer RC. Rip my tickets, rip my play points, but here we are. Um, needed to take a little break and play some Hammer for y'all. So we're going to run through a league. Um, on my Patreon, I recently released a list that I think this list right here but basically the updates are just running for during the magistrate because we cut the hollowed moonlights the reason i cut the hollowed moonlights is because effectively with creativity increasing the number of teferi time ravelers that they're playing the uh, hollowed moonlights were a lot less reliable and so i am approaching the matchup much more different uh, much differently than before i'm being a lot more aggressive less reactive and i'm pretty happy with the approach um if you are leaning into the aggressive approach orvar is definitely kind of the the weapon of choice because you just get to tap out every turn just kind of jam and then just kind of go from there uh of course if they're playing sarah's emissary um then you're you're sol you're just dead but i think that's fine most people are not playing sarah's emissary because i think they can beat hammer without it um yeah but that's that's about it uh other than that solitude hammer still great lonely hammer is awesome and we're gonna kind of dive in i guess the reason that i added the other dranith is because with the removal of uh, hollow moonlight we wanted an extra piece of hate for the uh living end matchup and Dranath Magistrate, really nice there. Also, of course, nice against Rhinos as a side, uh, you know, as a side benefit. But anyway, I will see y'all in round one. All right, and here we are for round one. We uh, lost the die roll, which was a bad plan. But looking at the hand, this hand's pretty bad. Um, if I'm on the play, I might consider keeping it just because we do have double sentinel on the play. But no quippers, no hammers. This is just uh, just not what it's about. And so this hand, on the other hand, has a hammer, an equipper, a second hammer, and plenty of metal craft. We also have the turn one sentinel. This hand is great. So the question is, what are we bottoming? And I believe, so we can't bottom the lands. That's pretty easy. Um, not bottoming the sentinel or the hammer. I don't want to bottom paladin either or the stone forge. I think it's just the ornithopter. And we, well, okay. So yeah, especially since we can't actually cast the paladin on two, just not a lot of reason. All right. So Tron. All right. <laughs> just straight up trying uh, search of salvation is not the card that i want in this matchup but it's fine um so i'm trying to think so if we go esper sentinel on one and then turn two we play stoneforge go get paradise mantle to guarantee the second white source we can then play paradise mantle equip we still need another white source um the other consideration is if this is eldrazi tron um i still think i'm just gonna play out the sentinel because we can of course get the hammer into play through a chalice on one with the stoneforge mystic but yeah other than that we'll we'll see what they're on okay it's blue tron oh my gosh <laughs> people truly are bananas um so yeah i'm just gonna attack for one here and then probably just play the Stoneforge Mystic. They could condescend, but I think I'm okay with that. If they condescend, we can play land, play Ink Moth, or yeah, play uh, play Planes, play Paladin, Ink Moth, tap to play the Hammer. So I think we just start with an attack. It's pretty easy. Of course, the other upside to them playing uh, the Bluetron version is condescend. Uh, will trigger the Esper Sentinel. Um, I don't know the exact list. I know this, this deck has been popping up a little bit more, but Surge of Salvation is actually reasonable against them as well, since they do play a lot of bounce spells. So I'm just going to Stoneforge here. And I get to draw a card. Ooh, Remand? I kind of love that. Okay. So now what does our next turn look like? Okay, well, we're going to draw another card here. All right. So y'all are going to see me go to the lab just immediately. Oh my goodness. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go hammer, planes, outfitter, hit them for 11. That seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm about it. Put that there. And now, of course, we're in, we're in pretty good shape here because we can suit up again the following turn. If you hear rustling in the back, that is just my dog being a silly, silly boy. Okay. Trinket mage, you got it. Expedition map, okay. Bluetron at its peak Bluetronness. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna play Paladin here, play a second hammer, um, and then equip. Yeah. Generally, I don't think they can play Force of Negation, but 
I'm also not playing around it, so. And of course, we're going to equip this to the other creature, so now we have two lethal threats. Just gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah, all right. Uh, Bluetron down. They did stumble on lands there, and they drew us, I don't know if it was two or three cards off of the uh, Sentinel. Um, so straight up, I don't know what these lists looks like, so I'm gonna see if I can pull it up on the old goldfish. I think I did well in some challenges recently. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. <laughs> so I think we want to be really aggressive. Um, Pithing Needle might be fine. Um, I think Blacksmith Skill is slightly better than Surge, but like, honestly not super high on either one. I think Solitude, even though they probably have Worm Coils, I'm not really about Solitude here. Um, so cutting the Solitudes, like against Tron, you generally just want to kill them real, real quick. Uh, we know they don't have Force of Vigor, so Surge of Salvation is um, less important than something like blacksmith skill. Um, we could bring in the marches because they do hit their, their, um, like expedition maps and things like that. They also could be playing like a Karn package. So tagging those doesn't, I don't hate it. Honestly, I kind of just, so trim the, trim two surges, two solitudes for these four pieces. I think that's fine. Um, I do want to keep all the ornithopters because of course the ornithopter does do a reasonable amount of work in just making the deck a little bit faster with our zero drop. So yeah, I'll just try this. Wow, this hand is so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> let's, uh, let's throw this one back. Um, so they also mold the six, put a card on the bottom. I think this hand does nothing because if we don't find a hammer, we just lose the game uh this hand is way more powerful so the question is well uh, i might have gone to four i thought i had a saga for some reason um so we're bottoming two cards and i think it might just be giver i think it's like definitely giver giver and could go giver hammer i don't hate it could also bottom the call because like i guess who cares not me all right yeah Let's try this. This hand could obviously backfire. Going to f uh, to four is never great, but I think it's pretty reasonable. Um, and I will just play out the drum here. Um, and so even if we hit Sigardizade off the top, we couldn't attack with the Ornithopter because, yeah. Um, I don't hate going Ornithopter here, honestly, because if they go like Urza Saga, which they could totally be playing, we can, we can sinkhole it with chapter one on the stack. I don't think they're playing Urza Saga, but okay. So now if we hit a land, we could definitely tag that. All right, I think I'm just gonna do that. Um, yeah, fix their mana. Yeah, upon further reflection, I think I'm actually supposed to uh, cut the stone, the Giver of Runes. I think that card's pretty, pretty medium. Cause what are we doing protecting from colors? That sounds terrible. All right, well they have Tron, but they don't have blue mana. So that's good. Perfect. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get in there. Uh, sure. Okay, so Dismember is good to know about. Um, I will just play out the second Ornithopter here. Bluetron is certainly a deck that you can register. Uh, yeah, they, have, they have, once again, they have like tons and tons of mana. Um, Urza Saga is a good card. I will take the Urza Saga. So the question is if we want to play out the Hammer. I don't think we do. So next turn we make a 4-4, four, four, then a second 5-5. Five, five. I think we're just passing here. I don't think there's a reason to play the Hammer out. Cool. Okay, uh, that is unfortunate that we don't have another land, but we did bottom an Amarius Call, so what you gonna do? It is nice that we can't get um, Dressed Down currently because they don't have blue mana. I think once they find a blue source, we're probably in trouble, but who knows? All right, well, there's a blue source for sure. Um, Esper Sentinel also not looking super exciting there because obviously I think they can pay the tax. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done the calculation, but I feel like they probably can. Okay, so we know about Dismember, which is good to keep in mind what kind of disruption your opponent has um, kind of post-board. All right, well, I'm going to keep it really simple. Just uh, make a construct. Um, if they have Dress Down, they have Dress... Oh, ooh, wow. I think I'm going to make a construct and then go get... Could go get a, uh, could honestly go get a Paradise Mantle, because the Paradise Mantle is a ton of mana. Yeah. It's either Paradise Mantle or Springleaf Drum here, I think. Um, um, if we do get the drum, we can obviously cast the Esper Sentinel, which might be the call. The thing is, if we grab Paradise Mantle, we can play Paladin and add a bunch more mana. I think I am just going to get the drum here, though. Oh, it's pretty close. Um, 
And then I don't think I'm getting the Sentinel into play. I think I'm just going to, uh, I think they could have uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon in hand as well, which like just doesn't do anything, which makes sense why they haven't done anything. Um, I think I'm just going to play the Sentinel because I would rather they counter the Sentinel than a hammer. Looks like a condescend to me. I will, I will in fact not. I will still not. Okay. So one top, one bottom. I don't like that they put any on top, but you know is what it is the good news is we also have lethal in play currently um if they do play something absurd like an oblivion stone obviously we're gonna lose but i, I ain't beating that with this hand so <laughs> not gonna worry too much about it yeah so they still have 10 mana are they wanting to remand here it is awkward for them that they are they probably have like multiple blue spells in hand and for the first you know four turns of the game they couldn't cast it okay treasure mage so they're gonna go get a worm coil engine here i would presume which I don't love, but honestly, it's not too bad for me. Six or greater, right? So they could get something bigger. They could get like a Sundering Titan, I guess. Worm Coil Engine. Yep, that makes sense. So this was actually why I was considering getting a Ginger Brute last turn off of the Urza Saga. But I think having the extra mana is pretty important. We get a Dismember here. Oh, Return. Yeah, sure. So now they can also play Oboro and hold up counter spells. It's pretty gross. Um, I think I'm supposed to play Paladin here because I think they're more likely to counter this. And if they only have one counter spell, obviously they can't double counter here. Um, but now we get to play the hammer. Uh, one top, one bottom. Let's get you in here. These are seven sevens, so they can't like they can attack if they want, but they probably shouldn't. In gain six, go to sixteen. I'd go to fourteen and crack back for fourteen. So I guess they technically could. Yeah. So. If they're double spelling, it's probably returning a Boro, casting a blue spell, and then playing a Boro. That's really funny. I had never seen that interaction before. Transmute. Okay. Uh, like Walking Ballista would be my estimation here. Walking Ballista, I would not be a fan of, but it would only be for six, seven, eight, nine. So it'd be for five. So the construct would actually get to, to live. Um, and then hopefully we can find something like a Shadow Spear would be really nice. Engineer Explosives, that was the one I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do. Yeah, pretty sure we can concede here. <laughs> yeah. I guess we, I'll, I'll take a draw step. Kind of weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're just going to attack for eight and then eight. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe we'll get a better keepable hand. Okay, so... Surge, still not a huge fan. I'm fine with like the one, uh, the one blacksmith skill, but yeah, I just don't think we need Surge basically at all. Um, I don't mind a couple solitudes potentially. Um, like one seems fine. Is there anything else we would potentially want to cut? Oh, the Givers. The Givers are pretty, pretty bad here. Um, I still don't think we want Surge. Eh, just a few solitudes seems fine. Being able to tag a a worm coil engine doesn't seem pretty nice. Okay, yeah, this hand is pretty good. So turn one, Sentinel. Turn two, Urza's Saga. Potentially March something. Yeah, this hand's fine. And we also have an Ink Moth kill rolled up on turn four, I think. But yeah, I feel like against this Tron, Esper Sentinel is actually like quite good. Usually against Tron, I'm not super high on it. Okay, Gemstone Caverns, you got it. What are they exile? It is nice that this Amarius Call can potentially just pitch to the the march here if that's what we decide we want to do with it that's why so i've seen a lot of people saying hey do i need four mary's call for the deck and i was like i think you just should um because one it makes your solitudes a lot better because you have more cards to pitch um but two like it's just a reasonable card to play uh, exiling walking ballista huge fan of that yes we will bolt ourselves would you like to dismember to pay four life and let me draw a card they did not unfortunately a man can dream so exiled walking ballista to the gemstone cavern so there is a world where i don't saga onto okay but this is not one of them <laughs> uh yeah let's just get in there yeah yeah i'm just gonna saga here if they do play out a card that i can march i probably will even if it involves pitching the amarius call especially now that we we hit the extra white source blast zone for one is pretty gross can't march that costs three and tap correct yeah okay so honestly this is fine um and so i'm gonna play the ink moth here because one that means it's not summoning sick um that means it's not summoning sick for the attack potentially next turn but two um that means i'll have more white mana available the turn after if i want to make a construct because of course ink moth 
uh, because if I play out the planes, then I'll have to make a construct, and then I'll have to tap the planes again to make a construct. So I'm just going to play out the Ink Moth, and I'm just going to attack for one here. Ferocious, I know. It is funny that the Blast Zone can't hit the uh, can't hit the Saga Tokens. There's for knowledge, so I will draw a card off of this, which is pretty nice. Okay, yeah, so um, the thing about drawing the hammer is now we don't need to go get a hammer. Um, I might anyway, depending on what uh, what shapes up, but I don't hate just going to get like a Ginger Brute either, or in, just like a Pithing Needle on Blast Zone seems pretty nice. Draw three, discard two, or are you discarding an artifact? Sometimes in leagues, you just uh, you find weird stuff. Talisman of Dominance, okay. You got it. So right now, opponent is probably figuring out if they need to kill the the construct, or if they're wanting to set up the blast zone. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, so they could have a bounce spell here. I'm still just gonna go ahead and make a construct. Okay. And so the question is, okay. Um, so the question is, do we want to make a saga construct? Um, I think we're grabbing a needle for this blast zone. If we grab a needle for the blast zone, then, so if we, the question is like, so if we make a construct here and then go get a needle for blast zone, we then get to attack for one, two, three, it'd be a four, four, so five. And then we can also play planes. Honestly, we could really like play planes and play ginger brute as well. I kind of also don't want to play spells because they probably just have condescend up. So I kind of like just making a construct here. And yeah, we are just going to get a needle on blast zone here. Um, and I think I am just going to play the Ginger Brute because I care less about the Ginger Brute resolving than I care about the Hammer resolving. This also adds effectively two more power to the attack. If they want to counter Ginger Brute, like, I am totally okay with that. Yeah, do you want to pay one more for the Esper Sentinel here? Um, yeah, they did. Uh, nope. I will not pay. And now we get to crack in for five points. Five points is pretty nice. Note, next turn, if we do decide to go Paladin Hammer, um... I will be leading with Hammer because they did show us Dismember in game two. So that means that if we play Paladin and then Hammer, they can just uh, Dismember the Paladin in response. So that's why we're going to sequence that way, even though it does technically give up a card. Um, I think it's more than worth it. Okay. They put zero top, two bottom. That is what we love to see. Okay. Take five, go to 13 for... So yeah, they can't Tron this turn. Okay, so they can almost Tron, but not quite. They have E... Okay, so they need to tap the island if or the uh, gemstone if they play if they want to play EE. They could play Pithing Needle and name something. Okay, expedition map, pretty good. Would you like to pay the tax? They do not want to pay. The, ooh, wow, I won't lie, that's pretty nice. <laughs> um, okay, so we really want to map out this entire turn before we make any moves. Um, so is the drum free? Is the other question. So I do like that drum means that these both get pumped up to fives so we can go drum play land we probably just drum off of off of shattered sky um and then play play land play hammer and then these would be one two three four five fives and then we can animate to make them six sixes so the question is if we go clearing drum aid hammer obviously the ha if the hammer resolves they, they die um um so we can also go drum land aid and then we can tap drum and uh the other white source right so we'll need three total white sources here one two three so as long as we tap the nexus for the drum we have the extra man um i kind of like that yeah so i'm just gonna lead like that um, i guess this is we can leave the ink moth untapped as well this is fine yeah because obviously the drum is an extra white source. Yes, these are five fives. That is just the lethal attack. Um, I kind of like going attack and hammer. Yeah, because we can't just pitch the call to tag the map if they tap too low. Um, I kind of like casting the hammer pre-combat because then, because then, yeah, the paladin. Like if they do counter it, we can play the paladin. And if this resolves, I'm going to probably just put it on a, uh, a construct because the construct can't die to the dismember once the hammer's in play because it'll be a 6-6. Six, six. Okay. 
And the other reason to do it like this is, okay, hmm. So they've got to have repeal, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. So they repeal, we still get in for five, six damage. I don't hate it, I think this is fine. Um, The only question I have is if the Sentinel is worth attacking with, and I feel like, like one, we can animate the Ink Moth, but two, it's so like, what's the difference? So if they bounce this and then they take five, they go to eight versus going to, yeah, I'm not gonna attack with Sentinel. I'm just gonna attack with these two. Cyclonic Rift. Okay, would you like to pay is pretty, pretty relevant. They do not wanna pay. Okay, so here I think I just let this go um, and then I will play the Paladin and move the hammer. Okay, take five, go to eight. Of course they could have a counter spell here, but that means they're not popping the, the map this turn either. Gross, gross, gross. Right. Well, I'm curious. Obviously I have not played against Mono Blue Tron a whole lot. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, if, if I was thinking it was Cyclonic Rift instead of, well, actually Repeal can't hit lands either. So I was probably supposed to go for the Ink Moth kill, but could I have played around Condescend? Probably not. I don't know, man. I don't know. Lutron is an experience. Um, <laughs> so next turn we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We can almost marry his call. That's pretty cool. But it is nice that we can also tag a worm coil engine with this march, which is pretty funny. Yeah, so they can untap, use blast zone and ink moth to go, and they can they can tron uh, and have eight mana, which is pretty good. This is a long scry. Okay, one top, one bottom. Yep. I would also not hate any hammers, any stone forges. I would even take a shadow spear. I wouldn't be sad about any of those. We're tapping tower, which tells me we're probably not getting Tron online with the map. Yeah, I was like, because you don't tap one of the Tron lands if you're going to Tron. Um, they might need to T-West transmute for something as well. I don't know. The fact that we have... Almost like if any any artifact makes the construct a lethal attacker is pretty pretty important. Okay. Yep. So they're well, they're probably not troning anyway. Okay, I have no idea. Uh, they are troning. So they they need double blue. They need double blue. They have actual counter spell in their deck. That seems so difficult to cast. Spreading seas on that. Sure. It is nice that we can march that. Do we get to draw a card or no? Boo. And of course we can tag the, the march here, or we can tag the, the seas with a march. Treasure mage, okay. Probably getting worm coil. Could be something else, but it's almost always worm coil in that deck, I would presume. I don't know. Blue, blue Tron players are built different. Is that a dude? Or is it, I can't tell if it's like a dude. Yeah, worm coil engine, sure. Oh, okay. So we can just go um, paladin, march that for one, two, three. Um, I guess technically it is correct to do this. <laughs> And then march that. Uh, we're not gonna exile any white cards um, yeah, for exact seas. Um, X is currently three, tag that, attack four, casual 16 points of damage, GG's. It is cool that if we had a land there, we would have just cast the Amarius Call the next turn, which I think races the, the worm at that point. So yeah, uh, I'll see y'all in round two. That was a wild way to start. All right, after Blue Tron in round one, we are on the draw with so many mana sources. If there's a hammer in the sand, I'm snapping it off. But on the draw with an Esper Sentinel, uh, I think we can just throw this back pretty safely. Um, this hand is fine because we do have an Equipper. We also have Solitude and an Esper Sentinel. So I'm going to keep this. Um, maybe we bottom. I think we bottom the Ink Moth here, weirdly. Well, obviously, if I know what I'm facing then it's much simpler. I think with the aid, it makes it so much harder to throw back this Ink Moth. I think I'm gonna throw back the Amaria's Call here. Yeah. It is close, I think, between the Call and the Ink Moth, but the Ink Moth representing a, okay, creativity it is. <laughs> Got it. All right. Um. Yeah, and I'm gonna do this. If they wanna trade off the, if they wanna go Ren minus to draw me a card, then I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yep, yep. Okay. They do not want to let me draw a card. But I do like that. So they... Okay. I don't hate that. Um, kind of like attacking here. It would have been sick if we had just gotten to like draw a Surge of Salvation or something there and just really punish them. But whatever. Yeah. 
Um, and I think I'm just going to go Giver, Ink Moth, Pass. Because I'd rather not run the aid into a Spell Pierce if it can help it. I assume they're bolting the Sentinel or the Giver and paying the tax. Obviously, there are a lot of builds of creativity right now running around, so it's it's hard to know exactly what your opponent's on, but this should give us a better idea. Okay, so they almost definitely have Spell Pierce. Okay, so, yep, hitting the Esper Sentinel. So they're paying the tax. Um, this tells me they have Spell Pierce on their deck or they have Teferi in their hand. Like, those are the, the two pieces of information we can glean from that. Um, if they were a Leyline Binding build, I think they probably go get a Triland there. But I could be wrong. If they Teferi, this will be annoying. But it is what it is. <laughs> it sure, sure looks like Teferi. Yep, yep, draw your card. I'm having fun. The good news is we do get to tag the Teferi with the Ink Moth, which means that the Solitude will be live. Um, yeah, we're definitely doing this. Getting the Teferi out of here is, is really important. And I think I will jam the Giver here. It is tempting to slam the Aid, but I think it's, it's pretty close. And I like getting the Giver down, because if we draw Aid, then we can Aid, Animate, play that, um and hammer them so if we draw a hammer then we are we are quite live i i hope they go for it like more than anything in my life i hope they go for it here boo <laughs> it's like the opposite of going for it okay so we can go ink moth is it weird that i kind of want to just go ink moth paladin kind of like that and then we can pitch the aid well we would be no because we have the two ink moths so if i drew a hammer right play the hammer draw a card and then we can animate, animate, and that gets us to three. Yeah, let's play the second Ink Moth and the Paladin here. Um, yeah, not looking great for us, unfortunately, but what you gonna do? Okay, bending two lands. And unfortunately, I think I am supposed to let the, the Goblin Shaman attack, but they might just be going for a creativity for X equals two here. Looks like it. Okay, so I will tag one of these. So I tag one and then probably, so yeah, I'm losing, I'm losing my whole hand and that's fine. Um, the question is if we want to lose an Ink Moth Nexus, and I think we kind of do tag that one. Okay, you can gain a life and then I guess we can see what they're getting, right? Oh my gosh, it's an Archon. Um, so if we animate, we can sacrifice that. Yeah, I think we are supposed to. Yeah, because I think we're going to need to hit a couple good cards off the top anyway. And now we can block the Goblin, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'll take a hammer into something else here. That would have been really good last turn. Um, that would have been really, really nice. Um, but as it is, I guess we can... We can animate, block, and surge. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Surge, uh, <laughs> obviously surge would have been much better last turn, but I don't mind drawing a surge here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and this is why we have the deck built slightly different now, so we can bring in the, the Orvars and go a little more aggressive than we had in the past. Lightning Bolt's a pretty annoying one, um, but it is nice that we get to just surge now. <laughs> And we can, I mean, if they want to fetch shock, pay, play a spell pierce, we can certainly, um, we can certainly pay for that. And then they'll attack us for six and that's fine. Okay. Interesting. They don't usually play mana leak anymore. They could play change the equation, I guess. No. Uh, ley line binding, I'm guessing. Yep. Okay. So they are also a binding build. They just fetched pretty strangely before. Um, all right. And so I will animate and protect here. Not that it really matters, because this will also prevent all damage from red and black to the creatures I control. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'll just go uh, red, which might actually bait them into an attack, which would be cool. All right, Surge looking real good there. Obviously, we need to, uh, sure, yep, yeah, okay. I mean, I need them to have nothing, which seems incredibly unlikely, but uh, yeah, we're dead, okay. <laughs> because they can just copy the Archon. All right, so sideboard versus creativity right now. Obviously, I like the Orvars. Um, I like skill. I like surge. Those are all great. And then I like just trimming a little bit. Trim that, trim that. I think we actually trim the mantle instead of the drum in this matchup because you rarely get to the spot where you're able to like chain off. Um, I still don't know if I want to trim the outfitter if we're trying to go fast, but we're trying some things out. 
Um, historically, I like cutting Giver more because um, it does like they usually go after your your equipment post board, but I like that she can pressure a <sighs> man. <laughs> Um, I think I, so if I know I'm playing against someone who's really, really good, I'm not keeping this hand, but this hand's pretty bad, right? Like if they just go fair plan, they can just beat us. I think this hand's pretty bad. Um, this hand is not bad. This hand in fact is quite good. Um, I think I'm just going to bottom the ginger brute, play a Maria's call, play hammer yeah because we don't have this if i had a second white source i probably would just uh keep the ginger brute okay they mold a five too it's pretty it's really considerate of them yeah so i'm just gonna bolt myself play hammer past turn because one it grows the constructs but two it sets me up for potentially just a, a faster a faster connection with the with the hammer equips all right what you got for me opponent he mold the five i mold the six I am glad I didn't keep the, the seven. Like, having so many sideboard cards is great, but, like, we're not doing anything, and we only had one land, so it's hard to uh, to justify keeping that. Okay. Okay. It's really nice that we found another white source. Um, and, yeah, I think we're just going to pass here. And I think I will actually just play the uh, the second saga out here, but it is it is pretty close. Ren and six, yep. That is something else. The uh, Making the construct insulates a... A, uh, or making that playing the hammer insulates a construct from getting just pinged by Ren and Six. Ah, oh, huh. Well, <laughs> what a weird game. Um, I think I will, because I don't think I'm getting. A, I'm making a second construct. I think I'm just making the one. Like I'm definitely making one construct. It's the question is, are we making a second or a third? To fairy. I think I'm actually okay with this. Because if they bounce the Saga, we make a Construct um, and then kill the Teferi. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, all right. That is a spot where it's tempting. Like, if we had the Equip rolled up, I probably would have just um, would have just let the... I would have just fired off the Surge and just killed them. We didn't have it rolled up, so... <laughs> okay. Um, so, we can play that i actually don't feel like there's even a reason to pallet in here yeah i think we just uh attack the teferi down play the saga um and then the following turn i don't know we have a lot of a lot of good options here be pretty annoying if they had another teferi i probably would surge in response to that but it's hard to say Prismatic ending the hammer. Do I care? I don't think I care that much. So yeah, if the hammer dies, like we, we have these sagas, which are more hammers coming in. Um, yeah, I think I'm okay with this too. And I will, I will just saga here. All right, yep, you got it. And of course, if they go for the, the combo here, it could go really badly for them, which I think they are, they're doing. All right, you got it. Yep, and here we surge. Yep, counter all of your stuff and make a construct. Okay, so that, so we let that resolve. That's fine. And then the question is, do we float mana here? I think we do just float mana. I think so, yeah, if we float mana, we can then go get a hammer, play paladin, equip it and then play another saga and make the construct yeah um and obviously if they just have the interaction um then so be it because i don't i don't think we can beat that so i'm not going to worry about it it is nice that they have to block here or you know they die um i don't think we move the hammer i think we just keep it there because I, I don't think we can beat like good spells at this point <laughs> So I am not going to play like they have good spells. Um, note that it is nice that the search also means they didn't get to draw cards with the Archon triggers, which if they did, then I, th I think the game's super over. But I mean, we'll see. Yeah, of course, if I have an Orvar there, the game's over the other way around, right? Yep. Uh, I will sacrifice the Construct and discard a Planes. And if they combo again, then we're dead, probably. <laughs> but I, I'm okay with with that reality um renin six minus yeah yeah you, you got it that's a lot of work to kill a paladin i'm gonna say now okay do they also have 
Like if they have another creativity. All right. Looks like it. Oh my god. <laughs> Opponent cheese. Okay. Um. So if we draw a, I mean, a, a lot of different removal spells address that problem, right? Just lightning bolt that doesn't. Um. I draw another surge. I'm actually in reasonable shape, but we did not. So I think we're just dead, right? Um, if we make a construct. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do from this spot. Yeah, so we make a construct because we just can't address the Archon. Um, trying to think if we, I guess if we make a construct here and then grab like an Ornithopter, play plane, play drum, can then want to, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, we're, we are dead. GG's. All right, and I'll see y'all in round three. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm keeping this hand. It's, uh, if we hit a white source, then it's a turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm keeping it anyway because we have hammer, equipper, and, like, and we have saga. If we hit a third land, um, on, in, what, three draw steps, we're also, like, this hand's just incredible. Um, dark slick shores. Someone playing rogues. <laughs> um... I do kind of like running out the ginger brute here. If they want to push a ginger brute, I'm pretty happy with that. I have no idea. I played Dark Slick Shores in like Tesserator builds with um, like mocks and stuff like that. But beyond that, I don't know. Um, trying to think if there's a reason to play the Ornithopter out now. I guess the reason. Um, so if we, I don't think there's a reason to play the Ink Moth out or the Ornithopter out. I'm this this is a wild league. I kinda love it. Oh, Mill, get out. <laughs> get out, Mill. Yeah, that checks out. Okay. Well, the good news is we we have a better build against Mill than most. Um okay. What? Why sorry, I'm so confused. Why I'm I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm so sorry. I'm just incredibly confused about what I just witnessed. Um yeah, so I'm gonna go Saga Hammer. Ornithopter, Saka. Um, question is, do we chip in? I don't, I mean, we could see if they are scared of blacksmith skill, right? Uh, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> just get my free, my free point of damage. And I'm getting the hammer out in case they have like surgical. Obviously, if they are able to mill over a paladin and then surgical the paladin, that's also bad for me, but then at least we can just start making constructs, which are pretty big. Okay, Sheldock is tapped, which kind of a fan. It needs, what, 20 or fewer cards in a library? If a library has 20 or fewer cards, sure. This is when in paper I ask them, what'd you put on the bottom or what'd you, what'd you put under it? What's hiding? Okay, them not having a fetch land's pretty nice. Okay, no paladin. I could also just have drown in the lock, which would suck, but so honestly, I might not even go for that. Um, let's see. I kind of like just making a construct here. We can attack for one. I don't think it's worth it. I think we just pass here. It is nice that we definitely have enough CMC in our deck to beat a Tasha's. And if they do Tasha's, yep, yeah, okay. If they Tasha's, that means that they're exiling cards. Let's see how many they hit. 17, that's not too bad. One Amaria's call, just one Amaria's call, all right. And uh, so I think our opponent, if they don't have a land, they're dead. Opponent, this is supposed to be like your best matchup besides maybe Amulet. What's happened? Yeah, so now we go get another hammer. Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> all right, immediately play the Paladin and kill them with a ginger brute. Wow, yeah, they hit. Hammer, shadow spear, all right. All right, I will attack you for so many points of damage. I mean, I'm, se I'm sending the construct anyway because there's no reason not to. Sugar rush, let's go. All right, we are, you know, this is a pretty standard league. Bluetron, mill. All right, so against mill, I board up beyond 60 um, because it's like just, it's like extra life against burn. It's the same thing, right? Uh, so I definitely like all six of these. Um, I like Solitude just because it's extra, one, it's extra um, mana value for the deck against Tasha's, but two, tagging their crabs is super important, and they, it has the nice effect if they don't actually gain any life because the crabs have zero power, which it feels like justice. Um, and so, yeah, these six, and then we cut, I think the four Sentinels. Eh, so Sentinel, like, drawing a card is a little awkward, but it can get a little grindy, so it's it's hard to say. But yeah, I think it's just the four Sentinels. Um, you could absolutely defend bringing in a Needle as well. Um, needle shutting off. You know what? 
Let's let's do that. I'm okay boarding up to 63. And we are keeping in all the mana sources, because especially if you're boarding up beyond uh, 60, you do not want to... Uh, <laughs> you don't want to uh, not have as many mana sources. So I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to play Giver of Runes on turn one, and then Ink Moth on two, and probably Aid plus Hammer. If they do crab, it's also tempting to march them. Wow, just Watery Grave tapped pass? Okay. Okay, that could be that could be a fun little sneaky mana. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna turn one giver and pass. We do have a turn three kill lined up with um, with protection, which is pretty awesome. Okay, crab. It's just like if they had the crab turn one, they absolutely just should have. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like this is how you want to optimize this line, but we'll see. I could just be dying. So. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, sure. Oh, man, I don't want them to hit that with crab. <laughs> I want them to hit those with Tasha's. That would be all of it right there, just about it's 21. You got it. So here I think I will actually just march the, the crab. There is a world where we could go for the kill, but I don't think we do. If we had a hammer in the yard, I'd be a lot more aggressive, but do they have another crab? How, I'm, I'm confused how they're playing this game if they do have another crab. Maybe I'm doing my math wrong, but I feel like playing crab on turn one would have been much better for them. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a mill man. Deal. Yes. Really? That's that's what we're hitting? Not even like so let me let me just say, you're better off hitting the Amaria's calls here as well, or the solitudes, right? Because at least that's a lot of mana value. Now they could just have more surgicals in hand, and if they do, that's fine. Maybe they just wanted to look at my hand. But wow. Yeah, so they got two cards. Okay, that's pretty annoying. Ensnaring bridge. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay, so that's why. Yeah. Okay, that this makes more sense now. Um Yeah, so I think we just go Plains, Paladin, Hammer. Yeah, I'll just draw a card. I like drawing cards. Drawing cards is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I do like drawing cards. That's pretty nice, honestly. <laughs> there we go. Now we metalcraft. All right. Um, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, I would take a surge 100% here. It was a little awkward that we played the hammer. Maybe I wasn't supposed to because we, yeah, like if obviously if I knew I was drawing the ornithopter, I'm 100% not doing that, but we'll see. They also might have trouble emptying their hand here. If only Paladin could unequip for zero mana. Yeah, so their entire plan is relying on this ensnaring bridge sticking around. Okay, you got it. Okay, so interesting. So can move mantle to ornithopter, add mana. I mean, I'm going for the ink moth kill, like basically 100%. Um, I'm just curious if we are also, so we need to move. So if we move the mantle here, that's one mana, play aid, and then play yeah, I don't think we are playing the second paladin here. I can't drown and lock. They have to have another fatal push. Okay, so we can animate, attack. I think I am just bolting this in because then we can play a, around a spell pierce. Yeah, so if we animate, attack. So we, we animate here, attack. So I think I'm actually here. I'm going to do this. Now we get to this, yeah. Oh no, my mana, or my life total. I'm doing this right now because if they untap, we won't be able to go for the Ink Moth kill because of the Field of Rune. All right, yeah, and let's attack. Of course, playing around the Spell Pierce. And once again, like, I don't know Spell Pierce is in their deck, but it is a reasonable card they could have. Um, that coupled with, I don't know, mill players, they, they wild. <laughs> um, and when I, and it's not like casting the Amaria's Call is super, important this game so you know Hercules recall um okay man if only if we had surge like what a blowout um okay so yes yeah, so we can't attack with anything so we can just um say okay to this that's pretty annoying because now we can't attack with the ink moth um we do get to play out this second pure steel paladin man this opponent like hammer hurt them like they're a mill deck and they have Hercules Recall. Yo, chill. <laughs> uh, surgicaling, yeah, Ink Moth, sure. Okay. This is actually really bad for them because now we can kill them with the Ornithopter, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Yeah, because Ornithopter is never going to have more than one power or more than zero power until we kill them and they have zero cards, so they need to draw exactly right now. Um, I'm just going to play this out. And I'll play the Paradise Mantle, draw two. Yeah, I like drawing two cards. Okay, uh, my kingdom for a Surge of Salvation here, by the way. There we go. All right, called shot. Let's go. Uh, yeah, not... Yeah, all right. Uh, I believe this game is what you call over. Yeah, because they can't have a mill spell and a surgical. They would have to have drawn exactly third surgical right now. And I'm reminding myself, don't cast hammer. Don't cast hammer here. I guess if they if they field us here, uh, no, we don't. We don't solitude because we have to pitch the surge. It's pretty close, but... Oh, we could just surge, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, we just surge to sinkhole them. There we go. Sur surge is just the best card. Yeah, so they don't get a land drop. Um, and so they also just might not have anything. So because this is no longer a legal target, they don't get to resolve it. And now they die. Unless they have a card that I don't know exists. So one, two, three, four, five. We could do that. But I'm just going to attack them for lethal damage. Sir. Obviously, Blacksmith Skill would have done the same thing that game. Or that against specifically Field of Rune. But... Surge also would have countered um, their their Hercules recall, which, as a joke, I probably didn't want to do because let me reset everything. And another one. Yeah, don't don't any, let anyone convince you that Mill is playable. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mill players. I love the deck. I honestly, I own I own the whole deck. Um, but it's bad. And twenty you. All right. Uh, yeah. So Bluetron naturally, uh, creativity and Mill. This is peak modern league experience. I'll see y'all in round four. All right, we're back for round four. Let's see if we get some more spice. Um, this hand is not really spicy, but it is just pretty good. So, yeah, I'll keep it. <laughs> so one thing to consider is if we go Saga. Yeah, can't do that. Okay. Yeah, if we had a drum or a mantle, this, this would be a really, really gross hand. But, yeah, I'm just going to play out Cigar to Zate. And I will play out the Ornithopter in the event that we draw a hammer and just pass turn. Obviously, if we get, like, Blood Moon, that's, like, pretty gross. Eh. I don't know why I put these things out in the universe. All right, yeah, would you like my Cigar to Zate or my Amarius Call? <laughs> why, why do I put these things out in the universe to, like, punish me so hard? That's not what we want to draw. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play out the second aid. Yeah, as much as I want to send a message with the Ornithopter, I think it's it's correct to not send the message. Blood Tithe, sure. Okay, maybe I was supposed to play the aid. Yeah, I think I was. Man... <laughs> As much as I would love to um, play an Esper Sentinel, I think getting the Construct out is more important. That's... <laughs> I don't like that they can... Uh, uh, sure. Okay. You got it? Yeah, kill the Ornithopter? That's fine. You got it. Ornithopter down. I know I'm not getting Blood Moon this turn, which yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about not getting Blood Mooned. All right. Construct in. Let's go for, with green mana. Um... I mean, yeah, I'm just I'm just making a construct here. So actually, so like, what's the plan here? So we make a construct. I'm not getting a hammer because like they 1000% have a removal spell. So if we're not getting a hammer, we could reasonably get a shadow spear and then a Maria's Call Esper Sentinel, which I don't hate. Um, could also reasonably get a shadow spear, um, put the shadow spear on one of the constructs and then play the Asper Sentinel anyway. Shadow spear seems like pretty reasonable to me. Also just get a drum to make sure we can cast spells if they do blood moon us here. Casting spells is pretty rad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of, kind of about the casting spells life. Um, and then response lightning bolt. All right. Oh, that was so bad. So I was supposed to bolt in the Ameri's call first. Because if I bolt in the Amarius Call, I can animate the Ink Moth. Oh my god. Oh, the punts. The punts are so real. Um, nope. Oh, that was so bad. Okay. Live and learn. Live and learn. Okay. Pitched Takanuma. And what, what goodies have you found, opponent? Season Pyros, pretty annoying. For sure. For sure. Okay. I will not be blocking. Contrary to popular opinion, I'm only an idiot half the time. Um... One, two, three, four. I think I am just cracking this canopy here. Yeah, that's a way better card. Um. Yeah, I'll play the Sog out. And are we attacking? I think we're attacking. Well, so we attack. They go to 14. 
We can put them to 13. They crack back for six. We go to seven. That's not a great race for us. I think we wait a turn because this construct can at least hold off the, the Spyro. Are they pitching to blood or are they letting me draw a card? Yeah, blood it is. Voidwalker, yeah, card's not great here, so pretty reasonable. It's nice that the blood tithe isn't a removal spell currently. As always against Scam, the games are either super tight or just complete monster blowouts. Um, I will just take four from the Blood Tithe here. I think it is simply not worth the risk. Yeah, all right. Glad they don't have the, uh, <laughs> real glad they don't have a, um, a Dothy Voidwalker in play. Be pretty gross. Probably take, uh, okay, five. So we are almost to a Marius Call mana here. Which is pretty rad. I think I'm just going to go Plains Cigardizade because it makes getting a hammer so, so much better. Um, So they can attack for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Attacking for lethal damage is a scary amount of damage. Um, if we crack in, I think we pass one more turn. Because the reality is I think we're just getting a Shadow Spear. And then they'll need multiple removal spells to address that. Yeah, so if we... Actually, so the plan will be if we hit a land, um, we'll probably be just to cast a Marius Call. Because we'll have, I'm doing my math right, so four, five. If we hit a land, it's six, and then we can go get a drum, seven. That looks like a Fury. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a construct. Yep. Uh, so we also need to animate here, because this will die. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Esper Sentinel down. Okay, um, so I think I'm just blocking the... Oh, they're just dead. Yeah, all right, I'm just gonna hammer them with the Ink Moth here. Take three, four, five, six, seven. They can't have Land Bolt because Land Bolt is two cards. Yeah, I was like, unless I miss something, like counting. Okay, yeah. All right, good game. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, just float, it doesn't matter. I'm there. Put that one there so we will say yes to that and then yes to that and then we'll go ahead animate again and that should do it yeah cool all right they obviously didn't have like the full scam hand but that's fine okay so yeah sanctifier is like basically only for this matchup at this point so we're definitely bringing in the sanctifiers i like like one solitude here uh the surge is obviously very good i might bring in the skill um i think so yeah and then the needle, of course, for um, engineered explosives. So what are we cutting? The ornithopters are all pretty poopy. Um, Springleaf drum and core outfitter. I believe those are the six we're cutting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's where we want to be. Orvar is something that's funny to bring in, because if they grief and you just kept a hand with only Orvar, you get to make a grief and then grief them. Who's really ahead? Pro probably still them, but it feels real good. Um, yeah, I, I'm keeping this hand. If they don't grief combo us on one, we get to just go planes, hold up, surge, pass. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, hmm. Time to just, like, play a Maria's Call tapped and pass kind of like that could also just play canopy yeah because it's possible we get to hold this but i do like getting my land in here um because they haven't done anything i like just slow rolling this and then we can go like next turn we can go stoneforge plus hold up surge off of horizon canopy um my guess is they have like an edict here okay yeah just okay um yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna... Um, we do need to play this first, because Stoneforge Mystic does trigger. And yeah, so the Shouldered's Edict also doesn't target, so Surge doesn't actually do anything. Um, and here I think I will just get the Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear's pretty good. I don't really want a hammer here. I'll just Surge. Just straight off. Now they have to commit another resource to kill the Stoneforge. And if they do, they do. That's fine. If they had the grief combo in their opening hand, they would have done it. I'm guessing Stoneforge down. Yep, you got it, friend. Okay, that's pretty annoying, won't lie. But um, yeah, I'll just go like Esper Sentinel, Shadow Spear, pass probably. The good news is like, can't cast a lot of spells either, so. Okay. Um, and I think I am just gonna tag the, well, yeah, I'm just gonna tag it. Um, and use a blacksmith skill here. This is important to do because they can take the solitude with the grief trigger and then undying the grief, but now they simply can't do that. So they will they will get to get the sanctifier. I don't even know that they will. Like they probably still will. Oh, 
Okay, so they they've got to have a um like a wrath here. So all right, all right. Drain two, playing moth. Pass turn. And what did they pitch to the grief? Another grief. Yeah, yeah. You got it. All right, Esper Sentinel, you did uh you did some good work. Now, if I could draw another one of the eight planes in my deck, I'd be pretty happy. But we we will see. The good news is they're not doing anything either, so <laughs> so I'm not like super broken up about this. But all right, cool, cool. All right, yeah, why not? This is great because then if we draw a Stone Forge, we can Stone Forge plus threaten um like the hammer. All right, so I'm gonna needle name EE -E here. Yep. It is funny that Blood Moons is like, I would assume it's choking them a little bit too. Yeah, so they know about Sanctifier Cauldra, but not the Paladin. Blood Tide of the Harvester, you got it. All right, planes, I'll take it. It is awkward because they actually need to respond to the trigger here. They did not respond to the trigger. I'm just, I am going to get the hammer here um, because, I mean, the reality is if we get Paradise Mantle, the Stoneforge needs to be able to untap anyway to get us that second white source, and I don't think that's happening. Um, I think it's much more likely to survive if we have this hammer. And if they, like, sack the Blood Tithe Harvester to kill the Stoneforge, then I will... I'll throw the hammer in, I'm sure. Yeah, you got a Blood Tithe first if you're planning on Blood Tithing. Okay, so they're cracking that. Okay, so now they can't... So they didn't have a bolt in hand. That's what that tells me. Because if they had the bolt, you're supposed to blood tithe the stone forge. And then if when I respond with the hammer, then you bolt it. Um, so either they don't like they, they weren't sure how to stack it or they didn't have the removal spell. And I'm going to I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they probably just didn't have the removal spell. Um, Pitching feign death. OK, yeah, so it'll resolve. Um, and I am just going to I'm just going to throw the hammer in like. <laughs> Whatever. You got the bolt. You got the bolt. All right. Yeah, you got it. I don't have to hide information anymore. So they probably take... I mean, they could take the cauldron here. If they can't kill the Stoneforge, they have to take the... But, I mean, this this whole hand is pretty bad news for them if I ever hit a white source as well. Okay. Terminate. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, they had the Edict. So now I just need to hit a white source, and we're in really good shape. Okay. All right, so we have eight white sources. Like, 20% of our deck is is uh, basic planes at this point. <laughs> and the good news is we have quite a few turns to find something. You can also just like find one of our, wow, okay. <laughs> deck, deck, come on. All right, all right, we can do this. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they only have one grief left in their deck as well. That's pretty cool. I'll take, yeah, just non Urza Saga lands. Like, obviously, you know, I'll take, I would prefer the basic planes the most, but just non Urza Saga lands would be. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. I, my deck's like, I heard you saying Urza Saga. I got you, boo. No. Not, not what I meant, friend. Um, yeah, so I'll take, I'll take a giver. I'll take any creature that I can cast. <laughs> that I can cast. Do I need to say it louder? All right, so, yeah, so, I mean, we have seen 22 cards in our deck and only one of the nine basic planes. <laughs> For anyone asking, like, oh, why aren't you playing fetches to thin your deck? One, fetching to thin your deck is so negligible, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's certainly not worth the extra life you're paying. And two, um, yeah, you got a friend. Um, and two, um, I need to draw basic planes i don't need to draw a fetch here okay i'll take it I'll, t I'll take it surely surely they can't do anything about this certainly all right well i i will snap block if given the opportunity i can't just go to three sure okay yeah you you got it so i'll gain two they get to rebuy that i guess that's fine gaining two is pretty big there basic planes right here yeah you don't have black mana friend <laughs> Uh, so in our deck currently we have let's see um, givers we have two givers we have any esper how many esper sentinels three esper sentinel two esper sentinels um, two stone forge I believe yeah two stone forge if I'm counting correctly um, all right okay let's see if we can settle this in game three. Oh my god <laughs> so we couldn't find a second basic planes at the top almost half of our deck them's the beats all right. 
Um, yeah, I think I'm cool with this still. All right. Um, I will keep this. We're on the play, so we have two draw steps to hit a land. I'm fine with that. We can also tag a scam, which is pretty important. So they just go like fury and try to punk us out that way. We can we can tag the fury. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got it. I take it back. We have three draws at a land. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what you want? One of my like I have the full house. Okay. One of the paladins. Sure. Okay, deck. All right. I'm I'm gonna need you to uh to really buckle up here. We're gonna draw a white source right right on right now. Let's we're gonna draw the white source. Kind of. That's kind of the white source. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm doing this. This is definitely a spot where I would have preferred to have. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it. So now they probably furious, which is gross. But wait, why did they shock? Okay, I I'm so confused. Why did they? Sh why would they have shocked if they weren't going to cast a spell that turn? Maybe they had like terminate, and then they realized that they would let me draw a card. Yep. Okay. Pitching the lightning. So this mu these must be just like their only two red cards, right? It's like the only thing that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely not. Nope. No. Nope. Um, I think I do just <sighs> just pitch a solitude here um probably yeah that's rough but yeah they can gain three life all right deck give me one of the 20 lands that are left in the deck please a little late but that's okay um i think we need just hammer here hmm that's probably a hammer then I think we just pass the turn. I don't. I think at this point the paladin is safer in our hand than they are on the battlefield because they've already used a thought seize. Yeah, they could have. A, I'm thinking of last game. I think. All right. Um, I'll take sanctifier off the top, please, or a stone forge, or or like another Urza saga. All right, I'll take a planes. Sure. Um. Yeah pass the turn here they might just have a blood moon but they're like i can't blood moon i have no black mana in play if i do that okay pitching terminate yeah well paladin certainly wasn't safe in play um i am tempted to actually yeah i think i'm just gonna do this if we draw a surge uh gross <laughs> yeah maybe that's bad i don't know i think it's pretty close yep okay so now we I need to hit a, another Saga here pretty badly. All right, all right. I still feel like the hand was a keep. We just needed to hit a land in the top three. And we just, we did not. We hit the Paradise Mantle instead. All right, all right. Give me a, give me an Esper Scent. I'll take, an Esper, I'll, take I'll take like most creatures at this point other than Solitude, but there aren't many Solitudes left. Um, but obviously, uh, Sanctifier would be kind of the, the bee's knees here. Uh, all right. Well, we need to hit something like yesterday. Um, I don't think there's anything that gets us out of this because the Shadow Spear's in the yard as well. Yeah, I think we're just dead. But them's the beats. We'll see if we can, if we can salvage this, I believe, in round five, if I'm remembering what round we're in. Yeah, match four. Yeah. Once again, still, uh, I think the the line was fine. Yeah, okay. That should definitely put it away here. Oh, sure. I will say that was actually bad because yeah, yeah, didn't matter. But all right, we'll see if we can if we can pick it up in round four, or round five. All right, and we are back for round five. I'd have to check, but I'm not sure if we won a die roll tonight. Which yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, oh man. So this hand has multiple sagas, a surge, a white source, and a giver. I am fine just saying, hey, I'll lose the blood moon. You know, that's the, that's the theme of the last match, so <laughs> we'll see. All right, it's just Tron. Um, okay, so we bolt ourselves, play giver, and then honestly, honestly, I think we just bolt ourselves, play aid, because if it is a, uh, is it, if it's like Eldrazi Tron, which I don't think, no, they're definitely not Eldrazi Tron because they have, um, they have Gigantha, meaning they don't have Chalice. So we know we're not getting Chalice. Um, I guess we probably play Giver here. So if we go Giver 
into stone forge yeah that's fine like the 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 hope is to just draw a uh uh, a hammer off the top, right? Um, I don't think I'm worrying about making a construct off the saga, but we will see. Okay. Um, and I will place Stoneforge here. Go grab a... Yeah, like, Cauldra is, is not what this match is about, so I almost, I almost was like, Cauldra is not what this match is about. Let's go grab Cauldra. Um, and so, I mean, we could attack. Probably fine. Yeah, whatever. This is about sending a message, okay? Yeah, and so now next turn we can go probably just another Urza's. Uh, no, we probably play the planes here. So we can go planes, aid, uh, hammer, plus hold up surge. Yeah, all right, just Natty Tron. Do they mulligan or they seven cards? Yep. All right. Um, and so I don't think I care about. I do want to one the Karn, but I don't think I care about. Oh, that's nice. Um, but I don't think I care about, uh, like, killing it because I don't really care if they. <laughs> remove um if they like tick up on me let's play this this on i don't think it matters um i think i'd rather keep the giver around but once again i don't think it matters too much so if we leave the karn around they tick up we probably get rid of the surge yeah i hit them for 11 hit karn for one might also just now we can't get rid of the planes because we need the planes for the outfitter just in case that kind of sucks for me if they have exactly eugene okay um yeah i think it's just search here inscribe tablet sack it reveal the top five put a land from all right so they can get a land that i'm okay with because they've already played their land for turn ah. so with any luck they hit the stone forge here and then we kill them did they get they got yeah that's a good card <laughs> who knew you know you want card spooky yes all right ggs <laughs> so yeah this is why you just hit the colossus hammer usually because like who cares if i get a one two so yep do 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 all right well i'm glad i sequenced it out the way i did and if we had taken out that car and we would have lost the game so i feel pretty smart <laughs> I, I have the moments uh, yes, I will. Will indeed. Yeah, so them on the play with turn three Karn into turn four Karn. Go grab Uge, or, uh, Ulamog. Still one. Okay, so in this matchup, um, March I think is reasonable. Needle is fine. Um, weirdly, I don't hate Surge because they do, they definitely have, well, they almost definitely have Karn the Great Creator. And Surge stopping them from like hitting one of your attached equipment is pretty important. Um, that being said, I think Solitude is pretty bad. Obviously, it can hit, you know, Ulamog or Worm Coil, but I think at that point, you're probably in not great shape anyway. Um, I think on the draw, especially, Esper Sentinel is probably pretty bad. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of my thoughts, but I don't know if I even have that much I really want to bring in. Um, yeah, two Marches, the Needle, and the Skill skill does help kind of protect against an oblivion stone kind of but not really um can also just like say whatever um i'll know more when they when they show me if they have gigantha in game two because if they have gigantha in game two that means they don't have force of vigor um but yeah so we'll see um i kind of do just like keeping the extra bodies in for metal craft and just for an early aggression um Giver of Runes might be bad because naming colorless really stinks. Um, I think I actually just do that. Giver of Runes can come up if you have big constructs specifically against a worm coil. I think I'm okay with that that world. So, and do we have any of the surges? I think we still have like one surge, one. Yes, yeah, so we have we have two surges and a skill. It's fine. Um, oh man. I mean, the culture kind of sucks here anyway, so I'm fine throwing it back, but. Well, we don't have... <laughs> so they did mold a six, which makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I think we mulligan this hand. Uh, this hand's pretty bad. I think we can do better. And they did reveal Gigantha. Okay, yeah, this hand. All right. Uh, silent Clearing, Saga. Saga, probably. All right. <laughs> let's, let's see if they have interaction. So I'm going to hit him for 10 on turn two. Yep, map, you got it. All right. I've beaten Tron on a mole to three before on camera. Let's see if we can beat Tron on a mole to four on the draw. 
Yeah, I don't have a lot of choice, so I'm just going to try to kill him. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a land. I am going to shock this in. Let's get in there for 10. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a Shadow Spear, not a second hammer. That would be sick. Um, I think I'm just going to hit him here. I don't think the one point makes a huge difference. Obviously, I wish this were Surge, Skill, any number of things that weren't exactly Shadow Spear. So it might, might be possible you're actually supposed to cut the spear. I think it's pretty close, though. This looks more like a Karn the Great Creator. Okay, we can beat that. They tick up. Uh, oh, they just have uh, Ensnaring Bridge here. Did I bring in the march? Nope. No, I don't. Yeah. No, we did bring in the marches. Okay. Not that we can address that with a march, but... Our hands were not great, so I'm fine. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Pass turn. Uh, I mean, another hammer could win it here. We'll see if they have any follow-ups. They might not. I mean, they, they have Karn the Great Creator, so they probably... All right, well, they have nine mana. That's like a pretty good amount of mana. <laughs> Yeah, so if they just go, so Oblivion Stone, two, three, four, five. So they have six mana currently. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. See if we can spike a card. And the reality is, if they uh, if they don't punt savagely, I I don't think we can win. So <laughs> not gonna worry about it too much. And I did bring in the needle, correct? Just making sure. I'm yeah, okay, I did. Okay. If they just go get Walking Bliss, I'll go ahead and move on to the next game. See if we can and get it in game three uh okay think that i guess they can pop the o stone if they want but all right i mean we'll see what we draw here kind of have to attack karn here not that not that it really matters okay what you got for me chromatic star okay would you like to pay the tax i'm hoping they just tap below oblivion stone range and then we draw a hammer and kill them that'd be pretty sweet Yep, you got it. Draw your card. Add your probably green. Yep, green mana. Sylvan Scrying, you got it. Urza's Tower. Oh man, now, now now you've got a lot of mana. I was concerned you would run out. <laughs> I was really worried about you, buddy. Uh, what are they hitting? Nothing. Sure. No. Tap. Play more spells. Please. <laughs> That's my only shot. Just play more spells. All right, doesn't doesn't look like our opponent's gonna get punked out. Perfect, perfect. I mean, I will attack the the Karn here, um, and I'm very close to conceding. I will play this out because that probably can still attack. Okay, so we're just popping it now. Sure, uh, putting a divinity counter on the sure, and yeah, you got it. Like once again, there are, there are draws in this deck that can beat the uh, the ensnaring bridge. I have to draw like very specific cards, but it is a thing. Okay, well, it's not looking great. So hear me out. What if, what if they tap below? Ratchet Bomb, Jesus Christ. <laughs> chill, chill opponent. I feel pretty dead here. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I hope the, uh, the eye roll was audible. They did tap below a no no those are towers these these arts i don't i don't know these arts like that looks like a tower everything's a tower these those are all towers mine's kind of not a tower but huh yeah whatever <laughs> i think we're pretty dead so i'm not gonna worry about it too much oh wow um oblivion stone and then yeah attack karn straight up i wonder if we're supposed to skill here i feel like we probably are yeah karn down to one so we can't wish pretty big oblivion stone currently doesn't do anything uh yeah sure killed a bunch of permanent all right um i would like to draw cigar aid into hammer yeah maybe they bricked off if they have more things oh okay. yeah sure okay that doesn't really count what else you got for me inscribe tablet sure you can get more land lands not not really a concern Field top five. Yes, yeah, so you you can't choose not to. Yeah. All right. Fine. Um. They probably just grab Gigantha here, right? Very little reason not to. Okay. Maybe I'm dumb. I am dumb. So. Okay. Well. First things first. I think we attack the Karn, and I think we need to hope to draw a cigar to Zade. Okay. We cleared the Karn. That's pretty helpful. <laughs> what else you got for me? You've got. 14 mana, uh, 16 mana, maybe nothing. Oh yeah, they can Oblivion Stone. Oh yeah, because yeah, they killed the Needle. Oh God, I'm so incredibly dead. Um, I mean, force them to do it, right? Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. You. 
What is this game? All right. Um, I, I think I'm going to move on. They have they have three back-to-back Oblivion Stones. Yeah, I think I'm going to save everyone a little bit of time here. Um, still think Giver is pretty bad. Snakefire doesn't do anything. Drannis, not great. Um, yeah, I think I like this configuration. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yep. Let's see if we just get a good seven. That'd be awesome. This is not a good seven. Um, this is actually not bad. It's not great. Um, okay, so we turn one Sentinel, turn two Stoneforge. I think we keep, we bottom the Shadow Spear. Yeah. Um, if we hit a land, I could also see a world where we march like their, their map that they play on one, but we'll see what they do. Stoneforge into Cauldre is is a pretty reasonable plan when you're on the play. It's not good when you're on the draw, but in a play, deal. Okay. Let's see what we draw for turn. Uh, I do kind of like just tagging the map here. Yeah, just exile that. Attack for one. I think I probably will play out the Ornithopter here. Um, actually, is there a reason to? They could play weird stuff. Pink Sphere, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes Tron players just like have weird, weird configurations because. Other than the, the main deck, there's just not a lot of uh, consistency, I think, across multiple lists. All right. Do you want to pay? They do not. Okay. Do you have stirrings would be my guess. Right, so I wouldn't hate specifically like an Urza Saga. That'd be really nice. Yep. Stirrings it is. What are they getting to accompany the Gigantha? By the way, I do think it looks super sick. That is a very disgruntled elk. The regular one just looks like I'm a big elk. Levine Stone. Okay. They are potentially a couple turns off of casting that, but we'll see okay um i don't hate that so yeah we just go attack for one play stoneforge play hammer i would assume yeah because then if we hit another land next turn we can core outfitter attach a hammer to something and stoneforge put the cauldron in yeah yep yep i like it Sit him for a whole boatload of damage all right oh i should have attacked with ornithopter to send a message for sure <laughs> all right opponent what you got for me Okay. Do I get to draw another card? Oh, sick. Okay, well, there's there's our fourth land. So we're hitting them for... Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Well, I feel like you're supposed to crack star first. Yeah, you're absolutely supposed to crack star first because if you hit third Tron piece, you just get to hit third... Tr you get to play the Oblivion Stone? Yeah, sure. Okay. See, I'm definitely playing the Saga. That part's easy. So I can play and crack stone. Um, I think I do want to diversify, like, Let's see, so five, six, teen, put them to two. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Caldra, let's go. And I, yeah, I'll put the hammer on something else in case they go like Karn. I, I think, I don't think it matters, but generally I like diversifying. If the Caldra made the hammer uh, indestructible as well, that would be a different story. Uh, and I'll put it on the Sentinel because the Sentinel will definitely draw me a card. Oh, and I'm, I'm sending the Ornithopter now. Ornithopter in, let's go. Chop, 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 chop. All right, hit you for 16 with... We hit, we only have one, two, three lethal threats here. Woe is me. And we're like definitely drawing a card. Yes, I can go power plant and they have eight mana. Um, oh, okay. So we were actually, I think, supposed to put hammer on the ornithopter because if they have exactly Ugin the spirit dragon and he minuses, then we... Uh, then he, it like kills everything that's a threat um versus oh wow yeah would you like to pop here okay smells like they're dead um yeah i don't think there's a reason for me to do much else just attack yeah so they pop it and die like even if they have pop the o stone plus warping whale they don't even have enough mana to do that uh that will resolve cauldron will deal first strike damage and looks like we finished the league reasonably three two uh, I've, I've definitely been doing much better than that recently, but I'll take a, <laughs> I will take a three, two, 60% win rate's pretty good. So let's go ahead and jump into the debrief. All right. So a couple things, um, when creativity just like has the curve and you have to mulligan, like you're just gonna, you're just gonna lose. And that's fine. Um, because I think that our matchups against most other decks are pretty good right now. Um, it's unfortunately we didn't play against rhinos because I think that matchup's like actively very, very good, especially now that we have surge. Um, I did trim the second skill for a second Orvar, Um, and I, I think I like that change because the reality is surge is better than blacksmith skill in basically every instance, except for exactly EE. And even then sometimes it's like, 
the EE just like beats you anyway. Um, Hidetsugu consumes all address because who cares if you save one permanent against HDA? Um, but when we're looking at the list, um, a couple questions I've gotten recently, I don't need you to scroll over, Moto, um, is for Mary's Call, do I need it? I think you do. I think that game, that that showed why we want four because these are the extra pitch spells for solitude they're you know even against like in march you can pitch that um uh obviously against um the scam deck it was unfortunate that we we uh didn't hit let me just make sure yeah we didn't hit any of our other nine planes we just had like the one um there was a consideration earlier in the game to play out the sanctifier but they had the edict and i read that they had the edict so i figured we were better off waiting um them's the beats um but yeah creativity i think that's just kind of the plan you want to go a little more aggressive you could bring in the extra solitude or two if you want i don't think it's very good and i think needle doesn't do enough either especially when they're on like prismatic ending leyline binding and to fairy and they just bounce it or they usually have nature's claim and potentially wear tear sideboard as well so it's like who cares um but yeah i mean we beat mill so I'm going to call this a moral victory. And I think a big part of that was because we had the, the Amarius calls in our deck to um, help soften the blow of that one of the one Tasha's hideous laughter. But yeah, so beat mill beat green Tron beat blue Tron and then lost to a, a close one to scam. And then uh creativity matchup might've been close, but one of the games at least did not feel close at all. And that's fine. That'll just happen. Um, other than that, super happy with the list. You could add another land if you want. If you did, I would probably add a third horizon land and that's fine. But other than that, yeah, super happy with the list. I love it. Um, if you want to see exact like sideboard breakdowns, I have that available on my Patreon for I think like four bucks. Um, but yeah, hope y'all have a good one and thanks for checking it out. Have a good weekend. Bye.